Let me ask you a question. Do you have a coach? One of my missions of the show is to really uncover what a great coach can do for you. And in order to answer that, I have brought the top coaches in the industry to find out what a great coach can do. Today's guest is the coaches of coaches. It's a long interview, this one. Stick with it. It is fantastic. But before we get to that, let's do a little housekeeping, as always. Emails, emails. E Listen, I love to hear from you guys. And I, and I love to hear what you guys are up to. So I, I really appreciate uh, the many great conversation I, I've had with you. So keep them coming. And you know what I really love is when you guys actually take the time and go out of your way to leave a rating and review on iTunes. I've, I've obviously told you how important it is. And for me, you know, I feel validated when you guys actually take the time and show that you find value in what I'm doing here. So go to iTunes. And, and if you find value in these free coaching sessions, leave a rating and review. Tell a friend, reach out, send me an email. You know, I try to respond and I do respond. I shouldn't have said try. I do respond to all of the emails I get. And my personal email goes to my phone is toby at super, T-O-B-Y, toby, at superagentslive.com. Now, on to the show. Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents have built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. Today on the show, we have Bob Corcoran. Bob is the founder and president of Corcoran Consulting and Coaching, an international consulting and coaching company that specializes in performance coaching and the implementation of business systems into an agent's existing practice. Since forming this practice in 1989, Bob has worked with hundreds of top producing agents worldwide in developing and implementing customized growth-oriented business systems that are proven to increase their bottom lines. Corcoran's implementation has empowered agents to run efficient offices while harnessing the latest technology. Hey, Bob, thanks for taking the time out today. Toby, it's such a pleasure to be here. You know, I just love the super, age, super agent interviews because you're bringing the best of the best. And, you know, as you say, you know, we just want to go out and get the best and bring it to the best. And I think just the service you're doing to the industry and to the agents that are listening to your interviews, it's all about the implementation of it. So I'm excited about today's call. Oh, right. Hey. Well, I gave a brief uh, background for, for you, but Bob, tell us a little bit about yourself and your current business. Well, you know, I've been in business. The technical name for the company is Corkin Consulting. Uh, what I realized when I got started in this business uh, in, in real estate kind of fell into it by accident as I had developed some IVR concepts uh, in the United States. And when I was helping agents implement this new strategy into their business, I realized they didn't know anything about running a business. My background was in business management. And so I found that niche 25 years ago to simply help agents, you know, set up their business and run it as a business and you know over the course of the 25 years you know real estate is just you know it's changed dramatically but at the end of the day we're still dealing with you know buyers and sellers you know the thing that's changed the most is the technology and what it allows us to do today and so helping agents harness you know that technology and what works and what doesn't work we take the guessing out you know and like i said the name of the company's cork and consulting i added in coaching when everybody and their mother decided that they could be a real estate coach because people could not differentiate the difference between a coach and a consultant yeah. here's my difference a coach tells you what to do toby a consultant like us we actually show you what to do we roll up our sleeves and we work with you we work with your team your support staff people we're involved in the interview process and it's teaching you know agents who want to grow a business you know how to run it like a business so it's not about you know it's about work-life balance toby right you know in this world like you said earlier real estate can eat you up can't it absolutely 
And, you know, we want to avoid that, you know, things like, you know, some of our rainmakers that we work with, you know, we say, hey, you work 50 hours a week, we work five days a week, you paint the canvas. What do we want to do? How do you want your life, you know, to really look at, you know, or what, how do you want your life to be? And it's not about, you know, people think in order to sell two, three, four, nine hundred homes that you got to work 168 hours a week. You can't. That's all there is. You know, so we say you should never work more than 50 hours a week or less. And, you know, we have clients that are working 30, 40 hours a week selling four or 500 homes. Jeez. But everyone's different, Toby. Yeah, so yeah, I agree. And, and, and you touched on, you know, I've talked to, interviewed lots and lots of, of super top performing agents. And this notion that you're talking about is, you know, working on your business instead of in your business, right? You know, being able to go out and hire a team and replicate yourself is comes up often. Um, you've seen, uh, you know, you've dealt with everyone from selling the two houses a year to 900, which is incredible. You know, for you in your 25 years, Bob, what do you think this, the, the biggest hurdle real estate entrepreneurs have to overcome in order to be successful? To look at it as a business, to act like the chief executive officer of a corporation because they just like, well, I'm just a real estate agent. Well, you, when you, uh, you know, you look at some of our teams, you know, they're doing a hundred million dollars in sales. How many businesses in their market are selling a hundred million dollars in sales? Very you know, they cute. say, yeah, but I'm selling, yeah, they say, yeah, but I'm selling houses. I said, fine, they're selling cars. Right. They're selling widgets. It doesn't matter. A hundred million is a hundred million. Yep. You know, and so it's really to help them elevate their thought process as a chief executive. And, and as soon as we point that out to them, you say, look, you're selling $30 million in sales you have. How many businesses in your marketplace have sales of $30 million? And it usually there's not a lot. Yeah. And so when they start thinking, they sit a little taller in their chair, Toby. They're going, wow, I am the CEO of a major corporation. That's the light bulb that goes up. That's the aha moment. And that right there is when true growth can begin. When you start thinking like a chief executive officer and instead of a real estate agent. So, so once I once I start to make that shift, Bob, I, I go, hey, you know what? I'm not an agent, but I am I am the CEO of a major corporation. I need to roll up my sleeves, and now what? I need to create a plan. Walk us through the steps of that mind shift. What am I going to What am I going to start to do tomorrow differently than I did today when I have shifted that mindset? Well, I think once you make the decision to shift the mindset, it's not just a matter of like turning a switch. You know, as, as, we, as we all been taught, it takes 21 days to instill new habits. So in order to make the shift, number one, find yourself an accountability partner hire a coach to help you make that shift. That'd be my first recommendation, actually. But you need that accountability in place and to do the things that a chief executive officer does. So if you're, you know, you're starting out and you say, all right, I want to be the CEO. What do I need to do? Well, then first paint the vision. What do you want your company to look like? But you need somebody to hold you accountable to what that vision is. So it's write down the vision, find somebody to hold you accountable to that vision and the steps and items you need to do on a daily basis to help you truly achieve, you know, that millionaire mindset, that CEO mindset. Because for most agents, you're still going to work in your business, which is working with the buying and selling public. But a lot of you, you need to learn to work on the business, which means I'm putting, I'm doing my marketing plans, I'm doing budgets, I'm reviewing my sales, I'm reviewing the MLS statistics. But you have to have time scheduled every single day to work on your business. And so how it looks, you got to start every day by working on the business. You don't just jump out of bed and start diving yourself right into real estate. Take time in the morning to plan your day, review your day. What do you have going on? And then implement the strategies that you put in place for yourself. Right. So you have that vision, you get that accountability person, uh, create your budget, you look at your market, you know, figure out where you're going to deploy your marketing dollars. Um, and I, I would imagine sometimes, Bob, it's hard to, you know, you, you get into all this planning uh, and, you know, you, you get lost in, you know, should you be planning or selling today? And I guess that's where it comes back to you, you need to have that accountability or coaching person uh, you know, on your team. Right. You know, when we first go, a client, you know, first comes on board with us, you know, they're, they're, you know it doesn't matter where, if they're a new, brand new agent starting out in real estate or somebody who's already selling two, three hundred. The number one complaint they come to us with, Toby, is I'm working way too many hours. My wife hates real estate. Okay. So it, it, it's all about you know, putting the boundaries in, but you must have that accountability. If you think you're going to hold yourself accountable, well, then you got a fool as a boss. 
So, you know, the whole thing is that accountability piece of it. And, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to realize, I don't care what your goal is. Uh, no person can ever tell you your goal is unrealistic. You know, I'll have people that say, well, I'm hiring you, Bob, so I'm going to go from 100 to 300 transactions in 12 months. I said, it took you 15 years to get to 100. What makes you think I can get you to 300? Well, your reputation. I said, yeah, but you know what? You've got to be the right agent then. You've got to be willing to do what it takes to help yourself get to that point. And that's where a lot of people fall short. Doing 300 homes may sound like, oh, wow, that's exciting. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's got to come down to mentally. And what it, part of it, Toby, really comes down to, how do you view money? A lot of people have a poverty mentality. And so they may, you know, you take an average sale price of 200000 uh, you know, at 3%, it's a 6000 commission. You might be on an 80 20 with your broker. So you're making $4,800. Uh, $4, you're selling 50 homes. You're making 240000 And people say, I'm comfortable. And they stop right there. Well, the way I look at it, if God gives the ability to create wealth, then don't deny God has planned because he has planned for the money. Once people overcome that poverty mentality, you know what, making 240000 yeah, it's great. Don't get me wrong. Okay, but if you have the ability to make a half million, why wouldn't you take that opportunity, Toby? I don't know. Why would you? I mean, I would. It, I have. You know, you know, it sounds good. A lot of people, they say they will, but they're unwilling to put the effort in to do what it takes to do to do that extra half million. So it's really, it's changing our mental concepts of first, how we look at money. What is our plan for money? You know, also work part of working on your business is planning your retirement. It's, you know, uh, you, you know it's not like you have somebody paying in social security. Okay. You're an independent contractor. So, you know, hire a financial planner and decide how much money you need. Okay. To retire on. And so that's all part of running your business. And it's looking at the holistic approach of what is being a real estate agent really all about and why am I doing it? And are you doing it because you're passionate? You know, and you got to be passionate about people because in this industry, you really got to look at yourself. You're here to serve people. Right. You're here to serve buyers and sellers. And for most of these people, you know, you have to be confident enough to help them make the largest financial, you know, decision that most people will make in their lives. And so what are you doing to sharpen your saw as a real estate agent? What books are you reading? One of our company's core values is seek wisdom. We constantly are putting out, you know, here's our book of the month, you know, that we want, you know, people to read. And there are things on leadership. It might be a book, it might be a CD, but what are you doing to sharpen your saw to better yourself today than you were yesterday? And, you know, we do our weekly team calls, you know, with our company as well. And it's, what's the one thing you did to make yourself better this week? And it's not just about work, Toby. Hey, you know what? I made it a point every morning to sit down with my wife for a half hour before I went off to work. Wow, that made your communication and your relationship with your wife a lot better, which eventually will make your real estate career a lot better. Right, 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 right. So all this, all this stuff thematically is, is we're getting back to this work-life balance. We're talking about mentality. Um, uh, so, so let's go back to, to your mental state. So, so most people start off with a poverty mentality. You, you know, you have to break through that and, and shed that kind of mentality. You know, we as real estate folks, we are in a world where we're dealing with no's all the time. We're getting kicked in the teeth every day. You know, we hear no's all day long. And, and sometimes when you hear too many no's, you feel like you want to quit. How does somebody, you know, in, in terms of mentality, how do, how do they just sharpen their, their mindset where they can push through that roadblock and get to success? Well, again, it's a mind shift, Toby. Okay, are they really saying no to you or are they really saying yes? Hmm. Or not Look yet. at it that way. Too, too many people say no, and they, they, you know, they pack it up and they go home. Or, you know, do you want to buy a house? No, and they hang up. The best question that, that every person needs to learn how to ask is the question, why? Too many people take no as a, you know, uh, an attack on them personally. Right. No, they're just, you just gotta, it's all, it's all your mindset. I always say every time you get a no, you're one, you're one answer question closer to a yes. So it's the mindset and the anchors you put on it. You know, too many people, they focus on the negative. I mean, that's what the world is. We're taught to focus on the negative. Look at the news. I don't even watch the news anymore. It's all negative. Okay, you read the newspaper. It's old news. Why am I reading old news? 
Right. Okay, it's all the mental state we have to do. And, you know, one of the things that keeps me going every single day, I have an affirmation I say every single day before my feet hit the ground. It's today is my own special miracle. Only I can make it happen. Only I can make it meaningful. With God's help, let's go. And then I'm up out of bed. But that is my first thought of the day. And my last thought before I go to sleep and shut my eyes is how much I love my wife. Wow. And, and so I'm going to bed with a right mindset. I'm waking up with just on fire because I've been blessed to be given another day to make a difference in a person's life. So just change your mindset, Toby. It would say, choose to wake up with a different attitude. People say, well, I'm not a morning person, or I wake up, I'm tired. I tell people, yeah, plenty of time to be tired when you're dead. Right. <laughs> you know what, Toby, it's living each day like it truly is the last day. Living the day to say, I have today, I get to make a difference. Right, and you're and I, I, Go ahead, I'm no, sorry. No, I was just saying, you know, this comes back to what you said earlier, having that servant's heart. You know, go out and yeah. serve people. Yeah. You know what? And, and, you know, it's, but, you know, like we don't, we rarely, when we're talking about goal setting with agents and things like that, we rarely talk about money. The only time we talk about money is when we're looking at a profit and loss statement, we review those on a monthly basis with our clients or quarterly basis, okay, or we're putting budgets together. That's when we talk about money. Like right now, our client, all of our clients are in the final stages of finalizing their sales goals for 2014. I don't care how much you want to sell. I don't care if you tell me you want to sell 20 million. 30 million or 40 million. I want to go the question I ask every single client. How many families are, do you want to serve next year? Hmm. The money from your marketing or the price point in your marketplace, that'll take care of itself. If you want to sell $500,000 homes, then do you hang with $500,000 people? Right. You know, if you, 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 know, if you're, you want to sell $500,000 homes and, and, and you hang around with people that rent, probably not going to be very successful at it. So it's really identifying what kind of market do you want and then invest yourself into that market. Okay, go where people who live in $500,000 houses go. Join chambers of commerces. Go to the after hours meeting. Meet other business owners. But it all comes down to your know, focus on serving people. So you see, this is where we can also start taking out the poverty mentality. If I tell somebody if they have a $200,000 average sale price, which the average commission would be $6,000, if they say they wanted to make you know, half a million dollars, well, you know, uh, let's say they want to make six hundred thousand. It'll just make it easier. I would, I, then I would say, okay, would you rather sell a hundred, serve a hundred people, or make six hundred thousand dollars? Nine out of ten people will say, I want to sell a hundred homes. It's easier. Hmm. But it's the same number. It's the same number, isn't it? Right, right. But you know, when you break it down, a hundred homes, you know, that's what eight a month. Yeah. Would you rather sell a hundred homes or eight and a half a month? It's the same number. Most people pick eight and a half months. We break goals down by historical data from each uh, multiple listing service. Because when someone says, well, I want to close three deals a month, I say, well, do you want to close three a month or do you want to call, close 36? Because, Toby, those are two different numbers. Yeah, we'll break the because, a little bit. Well, how, number, how homes are closed? In most markets, okay, the peak closing months are, are March, April, or April, May, June, July, and August. Right. You know, so if you say, I want to close 36, well, is it really three a month? No, because 36 might only be two in January, two in February, three in March, four in April, five in May, five in June, five in July, based upon how homes and when, how people buy in a market. Right. So when someone says, I want to do three a month, what happens? When you look at the historical data of the MLS and you say, well, gee, at 36, it really, I only needed one closing in January, you know? And so all of a sudden you say, I want to close three a month. Well, you close one, you already feel defeated and it's only January. Right. Right. right? You've already are two behind your goal. Then yeah. February comes. And maybe according to the historical data, you should only have one closing in February to hit 36. Well, you close one. Now you're four behind after two months. Most agents give up right there in February. 
So we say do it smart, okay? Base it on the historical data of how homes are closed. And we average it over years in a multiple from a multiple listing service to show agents it's not three a month, it's 36 a year. So it's allowing yourself to set up realistic goals to give you an opportunity to achieve the goal. Because nothing is more frustrating than setting goals you never can achieve. Yeah. And as a consultant, as a consultant, Toby, our job is to push you. If you tell me, Bob, I want to close 36, I said, really, Toby, why? I can get you to 50 in a matter of two minutes, but you'll make that decision. And the sad thing is you're going to say, I made you set that goal. I can't make you do anything. You have to allow it. Right. People need to take ownership for the responsibilities of the decisions they make. And just dare to dream. You know, our clients, sometimes they can't even talk to other agents in their market, okay? Because, you know, you know we'll, we're, like, we're in the process of setting goals now, like I said. And, you know, I, you know the, the, I, I, my private clients, you know, will probably close on an average of 300 properties with the private people I personally coach. Now, think of that, 300 homes. And our average client has a 47% increase in the first 12 months with us. So if you say you're selling, you know, uh, you know 100 homes, why well, nothing less than 150 or 200 would be your goal for next year. It's the hardest thing for every agent. There's a couple of stepping stones that agents make when we look at how many homes an agent sells. The first stepping stone is getting an agent to sell 25 homes. The hardest thing is getting an agent to go from 25 to 75 transactions because they're in that monetary comfort zone. I'm making a lot of money. I'm comfortable. I don't have too much debt. Once they break through the poverty mentality, getting them to 100 transactions, that is the, uh, the ultimate mental threshold. Once an agent gets to 100 closed sales a year, then it's doubling. I, you know, I, and our, my philosophy is if you're selling 100, then the goal next year is 200. If we sell, when we sell the 200, then the next year's goal is 400. It's going to be easier to take you from 200 to 400 than it is from 0 to 100 because of the mental blocks you have. So, hold, oh, so let me, let's unpack that a little bit. So, so the hardest hurdle is 25. So once you can get to 25, here, here's what I'm, I'm hearing out of that, Bob, and tell me if I'm wrong. So you need to learn, you need to have a certain kind of strategy, a working strategy. Uh, you need to have tactical moves or tactics that work. Once you can get the strategy and tactical stuff down right, you can get to 25. Getting from 25 to 75, you're replicating the same strategies and tactics, but it's, it's your mindset it's not a strategy, it's not a formula, but it's your mindset that stops most people from getting to the 75? Is that correct? Uh, I'd say that's about 80% of it. The other 20% is going to be leverage, okay? Because to sell 50 homes, where are you going to get, you know, there's only 24 hours in a day. Right. So, you know, an agent can do 50 homes by themselves, but now if they want to get to that 75, they're going to push themselves, and all they're going to do is destroy their marriages, ruin their family relationships, because they wind up putting in more, off, more hours every day. And before they know it, okay, the family hates them, and they wonder why. Well, you're a workaholic. So it's looking at it as a business. If you owned a restaurant, would you be the only employee of your restaurant? No, impossible. Well, right. Well, it's really impossible to do so much in real estate, whether I am hiring, you know, client care people or administrative people to work and do my non-dollar productive work, whether I'm hiring buyer agents to come on my team because I can't get back to all the buyer leads. So why not create an opportunity for, for somebody who you can mentor in real estate and bring them on board as a buyer agent? Because Quite frankly, you're throwing the leads in the garbage anyway. So what difference does it make? <laughs> right. so, so it's teaching the concepts of leveraging your time versus hiring other people to assist you. And, and you know, I would say the first uh, employee that every real estate agent needs to hire is a great contact manager. Okay. And what would that, what, that's what would, your, and what would that person that's be? That's your first employee. <laughs> right. And so, so break down that, the, the role and responsibility of that person. Well, when you look at it, when you look at a CRM, let's, let's say top producer, it's a great uh, contact management system for real estate. Yeah. Not only a contact manager, it's a lead incubator, it's a, it's a transaction management. Well, when you're using you know, technology to help you leverage your time, a lot of agents do things manually. Well, by using, let's say, top producer and then uh, the action plans associated with it, you put a new listing in, you launch an action plan, and every day the computer tells you what to do on that list, listing. You're not picking up the file the file and thumbing through paper say where am I right. but because 
the computer tells you what to do every day. So for an, an, an agent, you know, if they're selling 100 homes, they have a client care person, they're overwhelmed doing 100 manually. As soon as you start uh, electronic action plans, that same client care coordinator can do 175 or 200 transactions. Got it. And so it's learning the tools that are out there to make your life have a better life and be more efficient at what you do so that you as an agent can do what you're passionate about, which is list and sell. And so for that person, okay, let's, uh, you know, I, I'm just, right, and that makes tons of sense, you know, leverage technology, leverage, uh, you know, replicate yourself, go out and hire your first employee. Um, at what point, and you've seen, you know, hundreds, probably thousands of people, you know, build their businesses right, both the right way and the wrong way, you know, at what point should a person start to go out and build that team, hire that, that contact management person? Again, I'd say the day you open your doors. Got it. I'll give you an example here. I had an agent, she had hired me uh, in October, I think in October of the year, and she was moving to a brand new market. She had no name recognition whatsoever. So she hired me two and a half months before she was going to even appear. So through that, we started putting all the systems in place that she would need from a contact management perspective, from action plans to manage the listings. Now, this woman had a millionaire mindset already, okay? She knew how to be successful in real estate, but she's moving to a brand new market with no name recognition. So we hired uh, a full-time client care coordinator in November who started January 2nd. We hired a full-time buyer agent in November to start January 2nd. On January 2nd, I show up at her office. The whole team meets for the very first time. Oh, wow. That year, she closed 111 properties. Out of the gate. Unbelievable. Out of the gate, and she's never looked back since. I mean, this year she'll close 600 properties oh. in, a, in a city with a in a city with a population of 55,000 people. How is that even possible? It's all about leveraging and running it as a business. I don't, I'm not a huge believer in these huge teams that are out there. We, uh, we focus things on per agent productivity. We focus on efficiencies. You know, that's one of the things we do is we don't just coach the rainmaker. We coach the entire team, and that's the major difference between us and other companies. Because as a rainmaker, you can only do so much, but we have to show the people that you have hired to leverage your time to make sure they know how to answer the telephone. They know how to use their CRM. They know how to prospect, they know lead management, time management. So we get involved with the entire team. And the more you're involved with the entire team, Toby, the more efficient each agent becomes. So on this particular team at 600 properties, she has five buyer agents and two listing agents. So that's seven licenses selling 600 homes. So, so let's let's talk about time management because that's that's a that's you know we're we're touching on that in a, in a lot of different ways. You know how and you coach the whole team. I did not know that. That's that's really really interesting. Um, for for the the agent the the the, the in this what's her name? Uh, can you, I don't know if you can Lisa Burrett. Okay. Lisa Lisa Burrett. Okay, for Lisa. And go ahead. In Casper, Wyoming. Got it. Unbelievable. Uh, Fifty five thousand people. So, yeah. so how does how does Lisa? What does her day look like? Uh, you know, or or when she started, you know, she hired. She had her uh, her first hire. She had a team now. Um, what does her day look? How does she manage her day to to go from zero to one hundred and eleven? Year one. But you, you know, it's, everything is structured. We help our clients put together an ideal weekly schedule. Well, first and foremost, we talked about the CEO mindset. And then once you gain that uh, CEO mindset, it's everything centers around time management. My acronym for time is that is my excuse. T-I-M-E, that is my excuse. Hmm. Personalize it, this is my excuse. We can find time to do anything we want, Toby, if we want it bad enough. Right. I can go to an agent and say, I got an all expense paid trip to Hawaii. We're going for 10 days. You have five star resorts, you got airfare. Do you want to go? It's free to you. Yeah, when are we leaving? Tomorrow. Oh, I got three listing appointments. You know what? I can put them off till I get back. Right, right. Okay? If you're right, we find time for everything we want. So we start with, we teach our clients to put together an ideal weekly schedule. So somebody like Lisa, you know, it's all about you have time, a, a, a standalone real estate agent that's with no buyer agents. They may have some support staff working with them. But an agent gets paid to list, prospect, sell, and negotiate. Those are the only four things that an agent gets paid to do. Everything else is non-dollar productive. So first thing we want to do is differentiate what is your work, your dollar productive activities versus non-DPA. 
We say, let's go out and hire somebody to do a majority of our non-dollar productive work. So in Lisa's case, every day starts with office work. That's her voicemails. That's her personal emails. That takes her about 20 minutes. The next 10 minutes, she does a daily huddle with her administrator. Uh, she does a 15-minute huddle every day with her support staff. What's going on? What happened yesterday that I need to know about? What do you guys have scheduled today? Does everybody, uh, is anybody behind it? Does anybody need extra work? Okay, so they handle all operational things first thing in the morning within a half hour that she's there. Next huddle she holds is a sales huddle. The listing partners and buyer agents come into a daily huddle. Her support staff huddles at 8.30. Her agent huddles at 8.45. So she goes huddle from support staff. Then she huddles with her entire sales team, says, let's talk about our leads from yesterday, lead accountability, how, what, your, what were the results of your prospecting from yesterday, and what dollar productive activities do you have scheduled today? So that is done at 9 o'clock. She goes back and she does maybe 15 more minutes of office work of different things she got from the huddle that she needed to take care of or to delegate to somebody. Now she's free, okay, and she'll do her follow-up calls right after the, she takes care of that stuff. Uh, she'll go to lunch. She comes back from lunch, does follow-up calls and appointments in the afternoon. She generally leaves the office by 6 o'clock every single night, Monday through Friday. She does not work on weekends. Wow. And she just now started leaving at 1 o'clock on Fridays. Good for her. She's cracked you know, the code. Okay, but, I'm sorry? I was saying, I mean, she's cracked the code. I mean, this is, this is, I mean, this is why yep. this show is on. I mean, we love to hear these kind of stories. And I would love to get Lisa on the show and, and have her, you know, I, I don't know where she'd schedule it, maybe Friday after 1. But, um, <laughs> you know. She, I can personally make sure she guarantees time for you, Toby. I would love that. I would love that. Um, so, yeah. Time management, um, is, is that part of, you know, getting rid of that poverty mindset? Um, the opposite of that is having an abundance mindset, right? So um, right. Um, folks like Lisa, uh, as well as yourself, you know, you, you have, you, you've figured out how to, how to balance work and your personal life in ways that are productive on, on, uh, for, both, for both parts of your life. Um, right. Is that a key component in your, in your coaching sessions or mentoring sessions? It, it it's actually, it, it, it is the center of it, okay? Because, you know, what, what changed my life was really a Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, right. okay? You know, it's find something you love to do, create a business, and figure out how to make money from it. I fell into this niche. Nobody was doing, you know, the twist I put on, teach them to be the CEO. And I'm just passionate about helping people grow. Nothing is more satisfying for, you know, an agent. Yeah, I had an agent when he started with me. He was like 31 years old. And I told him by the time you're 35, you're going to be bored in real estate. He was selling 62 homes. And in three years, he went from 62. He'll close about 500 this year. His rental properties went from two or three rental properties. Now he has 15 rentals, free and clear with no mortgage. Uh, a month ago, he says, you know, three years ago, he told me I'd be bored. He goes, I got to tell you, I'm bored. Right. You know, but, you know, but see, now is when the true growth can come in, Toby. Hmm, how so? Once we get you to the point where you're selling $80 million, okay, you're having a great income. You, at 35, doesn't have to work another day in his life. Right. And he built it all in the last three years. It's about creating that mentality of abundance, even if you're damn broke. How about a client? She, she got into real estate. She was on food stamps. Had two small kids, age nine and seven. Okay? She did, you know, she, she, well, all she did was every single day, five, six days a week, Monday through Saturday, she got her little red wagon, put her two kids in the wagon, went door to door, said, hi, my name is so-and-so. I'm in real estate. If you know anybody thinking to buy or sell, here's my card. Her first year sold 149 homes. Wow. <laughs> Majority of it by door knocking. So people say, well, that's old school. All right, are you selling 149? No, I like old school. Right, I'll take it. That's it. And the whole thing is if agents really focus on the basics of business, it's not about, you know, technology is extremely important, but it's not the be-all and end-all to every business. Technology is to use to make our lives easier. A lot of times agents take on so much technology, now you got to hire a full-time IT person just to take care of all the damn technology that you don't use. Right. Well, it, and so focus on the basics of business. A real estate agent gets paid to list prospects, sell, and negotiate, period. You know, talk, and talk, that's all they can do. I was going to say, talking about, about technology, you know, a, a lot of times I see people 
um, you know, particularly aspiring agents, they, they tend to a little bit hide behind technology, right? So they market uh, through social media and they go, okay, my, my, I, I've done my marketing. It's not working, right? Instead of going out and doing, uh, getting that face-to-face -face interaction that, that, is, that is so helpful. Well, here, here's a good one, Toby. How many agents sell a house to somebody they never talked to? <laughs> right, right. Uh, How many houses do you sell where you never meet the buyer or seller? Yeah. So this is a face-to-face, belly-to-belly business. Now, yes, there are some deals done where I don't have to talk to the person. We find that a lot in the mil our military markets. Got it. Okay? Yeah. But, but that's a rarity. So don't focus on those one or two deals you've done in your lifetime because you never talked to them. This is an ear-to-ear, belly-to-belly business about picking up the telephone, making a phone call. And, and that's what it's all about is just making the phone call. But you've got to learn what to say, and that's one thing people, they say, well, Bob, I don't know what to say. How about, hi, this is Bob, how are you? Hi, this is Bob with ABC Real Estate, how are you today? And I go, what else should I say? <laughs> you think you can pick it up from hello? You know, but you know, we do we do we uh, do boot camps uh, throughout the year. And last week we had a uh, a listing mastery boot camp. So we we had agents come in here for training. It was a two day boot camp. The first day we go a half day, nine to nine, twelve hours. Twelve hours only half day. Toby, see the mindset. Yeah, I, the mindset. Twelve hours is a half day, right? right. Most people, oh no. <laughs> well, so so you know, and we set goals, and we had thirty six agents prospecting for listings, and they set eighty nine appointments in two hours. That's amazing. Okay, and one guy he was calling expired. He goes, Bob. He goes, he goes, he goes. You know what? I I prefer to work with buyers, and and he, I just don't like sellers. He goes, but I learned through your coaching that you know he who owns the listings owns the market. So I've decided to break through a big barrier I had in my real estate career, and I'm going to prospect expireds tonight. I am petrified. Well, we practice scripts, we role play, and go over and over and over. And I admire the man. He's been in the business 15 years. And he had this just this fear about him. He felt confident enough and took that leap by saying, I'm going to call expireds. Okay? And he set five appointments in two hours. He goes, if I knew it was this easy, I would have did it 15 years ago. And so you need somebody to break you through your wall of, of, of fear. Because you know what? People fear things they never experienced. doesn't make sense to me. So no. the whole mindset, it's all about mind shifting and constantly seeking wisdom. Surround yourself in your office with things that make you happy. You know, and that's what it's all about. Is, is, and, and also, eat your fog first thing in the morning. Right, that's a big one. That's a, that, because that paralyzes people throughout a day and they don't get anything done. Yeah, and it just looms over them and looms over them and then until finally they finally do that thing that they're dreading and they realize, well, number one, you get a huge I'm, – I'm terrible at that. I, you know, and, and one of the – I hate doing my taxes. I hate it. I wait to the last <laughs> minute and I, I, you know, I wait to the last minute and it's on my mind at night and it's on my mind in the morning. And finally I just get down – you know, get everything together, send it to my CPA, and 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 once that happens, Bob, like, I, I I'm free, and I realize, man, you know, it was not that bad. It, it, it never is. See, I live in a world that says no job is too small to outsource. Got it. No job's too small to outsource. You're paranoid about doing your taxes. You don't do them. Your CPA does them. You got to change your mental mindset. It's not you doing them. All you got to do is provide your profit and loss statement to your CPA. You've got the receipts if he wants them. I doubt it because he has your profit and loss statement. Right. right. You, give a, you send him an electronic file of your profit and loss statement. He does your taxes. Why are you paranoid about it? Well, I actually, for me, I actually have to create that, that P&L. Um, uh, well, I have to go find all my receipts. I have to create the P&L. And then I'm scared to death of what, what it's going to cost me. That's, what I, that's really it's how big of a check am I going to have to write. That's the thing that, that, that frightens me. You know what? I, I, here, here's the way I look at my taxes. I got a positive attitude for everything, Toby. I look at it this way. We live in the, land, the best land in the world. Okay, it's the land of the free, and it costs a lot of money to give me my freedom. And I always say, if the Lord has blessed me by making an abundant income, I'm happy to help those less fortunate than me. Right. How big can I write my check? There you go. Servant, servant you know, it all comes. 
it all comes to the positive mindset, the millionaire mindset. It's, it's, you know, sharpening your saw, whether it's listening, you know, to your interviews you put out, you know, you should be listening to those things over and over. See, seeking wisdom is not only what we read, but what we listen to. You know, we, 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 we listen to the radio in the car. Why not put a motivational CD in there instead of listening to the radio? Right. Okay, I mean, you, you go back and everybody can, everybody knows uh, their favorite song. They can sing the words. And you and I both know they never practiced the words. They just heard the song over and over and over. You put that, you put a, a motivational CD in your car and you just keep listening to it over and over and over. And one day you're going to wake up and you will be a changed person. You know, Bob, I'll tell you, I, I'm, I, I love this interview and I, I just, I, I I feel good. I'm not sure, I, I, but I, I like the stuff. And this, and by the way, for everybody in the audience, this is not a commercial for Bob. I'm not meaning to do this. I truly am enjoying what I'm hearing from him. And and, and what I was going to say, Bob, is, you know, you coach uh, uh, real estate folks, but but really, it sounds to me like your coaching is more. It's more about it's more about life coaching. It seems like you could coach uh, athletes, you know, uh, uh, other business people that that do not sell real estate. Well, we do. That all we, we, we actually do corporate coaching outside of real estate uh, in, in January. See, here's the way I look at what I do. I'm a business consultant, okay? Um, I help uh, you know, people set their businesses up the way they're supposed to, the way to win, okay? However, I look at it this way. Life gets in the way. And when life gets in the way, we have to slow down a little bit, take care of life so that the business can keep moving forward. And, you know, whether it's you have problems in your marriage, uh, you know, well, people that don't admit to me, Bob, I'm an alcoholic, I'm a drug addict, Bob, I want to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. You know, life gets in the way, Toby. And, and we take what we do, you know, with a very uh, soulful heart that, you know, God has put us in these people's life to help them have a better life. And that's really the passion, what we do and, and but life does get in the way okay we also uh, do life coaching as another pillar of our coaching company okay and we do the personal the personal coaching how about through Agmandino okay and and so you know we just we just feel blessed that we're able to offer so many services to so many people and that's what it's all about is is just people understand that there's a solution to everything and if I have one piece of advice, and well, I have to have, there's always two. Number one is seek first to understand, then to be understood. So understand where people are coming from, and then they can understand your position. Focus on the positive and focus on the solution. You know, when you live a life that says, focus on the positive, focus on the solution, you can't have problems, Toby, because everything in the world has a solution, doesn't it? Yeah. And so if you just have that mindset, focus on the positive, focus on the solution. And I always say when you're, you're looking at eating those frogs, the question I always say is, what is the worst thing that can happen to me? If, as long as the worst thing that can happen to me isn't death, then I'm okay. Right, right. You know, That's it. Okay, yeah. you, hey, you got to make a phone call. You may lose a seller. It's not death. And look at how much negative energy that seller was causing you. Right. By getting rid of that negative, you know, vibe in your life and surrounding yourself with people who are positive and teaching people how to be positive, you're going to have a much better gifted life. People have to believe and have the right to, to feel special. And go out and take on the world every single day like it's the last day you're going to lie, last day you're alive. I mean, I think you're doing that yeah. today, Bob. I mean, I, I don't know if you have this kind of energy all the time. But uh, but twenty four seven, twenty four seven. How do you? I mean, Bob, you're an older guy. I mean, you know, I mean, you're you're certainly older than me. I mean, how do you? Like, what do you do? Like, a, a bunch of coffee, or how do you? How do you? Is it no, nope. I drink decaffeinated coffee all day long. It's a choice. I have a, I have a choice to be high energy. I have a choice to have no energy. I choose to have energy. And and when you choose, okay, you're in control. And by focusing on the positive and the solution, uh, it, it's a beautiful, I, I'm this way at home. You know, I'm very, you know, I think, you know, people have different, you know, when we look at behavioral and personality styles, you know, people generally have a personality they want the public to see. Then they have a personality how they are with their friends and their family. Yeah. And then they have a personality of when they're alone in a room. Right. 
I strongly recommend you be the same person no matter what. Let people see who you are. Be transparent. When you can learn to be the same person 24-7, you'll have less stress in your life because you're not pretending to be something you're not. You know, with me, and you can ask, you can ask 100 people, does Bob have this energy? And they'll tell you from the day I met him, 20 years later, he still has the same energy. It's, you know, being, you know, what do you, what do you want, what do you want to hang your hat on, Toby? Uh, we hear it all the time. Well, I'm not feeling well. All right, you got plenty of time to be t- sick when you're dead. Right, right. I'll, I'll tell you, go, going back to the thing you just said about being, being your true self, being your authentic self, and that's something that, <clears throat> that's something that that I'm working on personally right now, and and. Um, Because I have, uh, it doesn't come off in this interview, but sometimes I have sort of an abrasive uh, attitude, and it's it's because basically, you know, if I want something, I go get it, and I and I sometimes will knock people down, and I'm I'm trying to, I'm really that's something I'm personally really trying to work on, and I'm 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 starting to get okay with, you know, not everybody's gonna like me, and that's okay, but the people who do like me, you know, for and they can see past my, uh, you know, potential, you know, sometimes Mm -hmm. abrasiveness, you know, that's that's okay too. Well, number one, I think if you remove the word try from your vocabulary, you say, I'm trying to do this. Eliminate the word try. Make a decision to be authentic or not be authentic. Quit right. trying to be authentic. Right. Every time you try, you will fail. Make a choice to do it. You know, and also you'll get some, you know, we call it 360 feedback. You know, in our company, we, I, I run the company and we teach our clients as well. To, uh, you run your, I run my company on three tenets. Number one, we only hire self-managed and self-disciplined people out of Jim Collins' book, uh, From Good to Great. Okay? Uh, the Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni. Adhere to the dysfunctions. Identify the dysfunction, uh, dysfunction on your, uh, in your life. Okay, and then our company's core values. So I run the company of these three tenants, and I say everybody must be self-managed, self-disciplined. As long as everybody is doing what they're supposed to do, any team member. See, I don't hire employees because an employee stabs you in the back. Right. I hire a team member because they'll stab you in the chest. I want people to be authentic with me. If you don't like something I say, say it to my face, not behind my back. And as long as, you know, any person in my company can fire, we don't say the word fire, we use the word release, you're released from the company. See how much power, more powerful is that is than you're fired? Right, yep. You know, you're released. Go be somebody else's hassle. Because you're not going to be mine anymore. But any person in the company can release another team member if they intentionally disregard one of those three tenants. Wow. They don't need to check with me. They can release them. Wow. And it's happened, and it's happened once. And I had, I had to honor it. The guy intentionally, he intentionally stepped on the tenant. We don't try. We do it. And he simply said to this person, no, you're right. You heard me. I'm going to try, 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 try. That's intentionally stepping on the culture. She released him on the spot. Unbelievable. What an interesting corporate but, culture. You know what? It's fun because, you know, life, life, life is hard, okay? But it's our environment. We get to create our environment. Our environment, it sounds nirva- like nirvana, and it is. But it's an extremely difficult culture to survive it because you cannot be negative, Toby. And imagine every real estate agent wasn't allowed. Now, you're allowed to vent, Okay, but you're not allowed to be negative. That means I need to get this off my chest and I move on. Negative is just, you know, you meet people and you walk away and go, oh, that person's so negative. And so you're not going to hang around them, are you? No. Then don't hire them to begin with. Right. You know, and that's the whole thing is identify your culture as a real estate agent. If you want to grow your team, grow your business, you got to learn the art of leverage. Most importantly, when you get into the hiring process, you got to have a hiring process. We provide all of those systems to our clients, hiring processes, hiring checklists, job descriptions, you know, compensation guidelines, policy handbooks, and everything we do is customized to our clients' needs. We're not a cookie cutter. We don't take the cookie cutter approach. We're not one size fits all. And that's what you know, it's really different. And so I think is, you know, your listeners are saying, what do I really want to do with my business? I'm going to say dare to dream. You know, if you're closing 30 homes, dare to go for 60. If you're closing 60, dare to go for 100. Once you get to 100, it should be nothing less than doubling. 100 to 200, 200 to 400. Usually we start hitting 400. You remember I said that mental block was 100 transactions? Yeah. The next mental block becomes four after 400. 
It just seems to be. And so it's at 400 to 500 area on top of units sold in a year. So once a client hits 400, we'll usually set a goal of only about 550. You know, because there is, I know over 25 years of doing this, I'm going to hit mental blocks. Once I hit the 550, then I'm looking at 750, and then I'm looking at 1,000. It'll be easier to go from 750 to 1,000 than zero to 100. You know, you're, you're touching on something, and, and we're running way, way over on this. Um, so hopefully, th everybody out in the audience, thanks for sticking with it. And if you have to uh, cut out and, and go back to it again, you can just go to superagentslive.com slash Bob Corcoran, and, and you can pick up where you left off. But, you know, <clears throat> yeah, I'll tell you, for me, Bob, uh, something that, that as I, because um, I've had some success in my life, and when I started really making money, and, and I'll, I'll, the, the most successful year I had, I paid, I paid taxes on $982,000, right? That was the, my most successful year. And when I had that year, Bob, um, I was doing the work, and, uh, you know, I, I didn't feel like I was having a mental block to get there. But, but when I got there, I felt guilty. I, I felt like I, I'm not sh – and I struggled with it for a long time. I, I felt guilty. I felt like I shouldn't have this, uh, uh, this kind of – I shouldn't – be making that kind of money when so many other people that you know were on my staff were not making anything near that. And that's something I struggled with. I don't know if that's something that, that you see. In your it's very normal. I remember I, I have uh, um, five brothers and a sister, six uh, kids in my family, uh, seven kids in my family, and uh, we grew up on government surplus food. Uh, I had five, five brothers, and my sister is the youngest. I didn't get my first brand new pair of Levi's until I was in the seventh grade. I remember it like it was yesterday. I got the light blue, skin tight <laughs> Levi's. They were my first pair of brand new Levi's because I always got hand me downs being the Ford son. Right. And, and I remember at that moment, moment I, I was just so proud of those pants. I said I would never want. Okay, and so as I built my life, and, and you, 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 you just got to have a drive, but you got to have great mentors. I have great mentors along the way in my life, and I'm so grateful for those mentors. And every once in a while, I reach out and just let them know what a difference they made in my life 30 years ago. I mean, I talked to the people for five years, but when I think of them, I got to call them. And, and so, but my last mental break was my mother. My mother worked two full-time jobs. She was a registered nurse, and I was so embarrassed for her to come see my house because it was an 8,400 square foot house oh. on a private lake surrounded by woods, oh. okay? She walked into the house for the first time, puts her arms around me and says, Robert, I can't tell you how proud I am of you. Oh, that's a great feeling. And I think ever, all of your listeners, we all long for that acceptance, especially from a parent. And that moment when she said that I am so proud of you, that is actually where I feel my poverty mentality went away because I was still hanging on to it. I was afraid to show mom my success. And, and that only happened six years ago. Wow. And so now, as I'll tell you, the last six years have been just like a dream. You know, I just feel so blessed because, you know, I believe that anything that we want, we can have, but you have to identify what it is you want. And so like where you talked about you felt guilty okay, about making that kind of money, that's part of the poverty mentality, Toby. And, and so it's, it's really, it's partitioning. Those people that you, you, that you employed, okay, they chose to be employed by you. You chose to start a business. And so there are people who choose to start businesses, and there are people who choose, they don't want to go through the stress. So they choose to work for somebody else. And that's how you mentally have to do it, is to, to say, hey, they, it's their choice. It's their choice if they uh, want to take a position with you that pays, you know, twenty-five or thirty or forty thousand dollars while you're making nine eighty. That's another reason in real estate why we don't talk about money, Toby. Why is that? We don't talk about you making nine hundred eighty thousand because those people that are making thirty go, wow, look at he made nine hundred eighty and all he paid me was thirty. Right. That's why we talk about how many families do you want to serve. Right. That's one of the main reasons we talk about units versus money. Interesting. Man, that is good. Listen, Bob, I could I could literally talk to you for another three hours, but we have to wrap this up. Let's let's get to the ask the agent round, and maybe in the future, I you know I'd love to have you on the show again, and we can we can talk about something very specific that you think, um, you know, is a is a stumbling block for for aspiring agents out there. But uh, so here's the ask the agent round. This is where I fire off questions, and you come back at me with answers that will help each of our audience members move the needle in their own businesses. All right, if you excellent. If you could recommend only one book, what would it be? 
the Bible. Besides the Bible, how's that one? Okay. Yeah. I would say The Traveler's Gift by Andy Andrews. That's a that's a first. Traveler's Gift. What's that about? It's about seven principles of life. It's a, it's about how we get to choose to do things, and we get to choose to be happy. We get to choose to be responsible for our choices. It's all about historical figures that made a choice that changed the world. Okay, and it is an, an unbelievable. It's, it's just an unbelievable. It's it's, not, it, it's a business book, but yet it's not a business book. Yeah. However, the principles in the book are just amazing when you start applying them to your life every day. Sounds you know, one of the principles are persist without exception. Okay, it's like you know the buck stops here. That's persisting without exception. So you know, it talks about the historical figures and the significance they had on life, on this world. And you got to remember, everything that you do in life matters. Most of the time, Toby, you don't know the difference you're making in somebody's life. But keep doing what you're doing as long as you're serving the greater purpose. Right. I love it. That sounds like a great book. Um, do you have an Internet tool like an Evernote that you're in love with that you can share with our audience? No, no, I don't. I think if our website, we get some really cool on the back end of our website, you know, for our clients for efficiency. Uh, we, we leave all the technology to all the other consultants and coaches out there to, you know, bug our people down. Never know. It's a great one. Okay. But as long as, you know, we look at the technologies, there's so many great tools out there, you know, like Google Hangouts. Okay. It's a great one. We do a lot of, uh, video coaching calls now. And so I love that, you know, Google Hangouts, I can bring three or four different clients together on one call, and we can all see each other. It really makes, you know, not having to go to seminars. I can bring, have a little seminar right here in my office. So it's, and, and I think something like that, or even Skype, okay, or FaceTime, okay, you know, just tools that said they can have, a, you know, FaceTime with a, a seller who wants to list their house who's on vacation. Right, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I'm trying to get actually an expert, a Google Hangouts expert on the show to talk about how, specifically how agents can use that. Because that's a, that's, a, that's a new tool that, that's, that's uh, free that's pretty fascinating. Um, well, it really is. You know, Skype has an upgraded version of bringing multiple people. You know, I can do Skype calls. That's free also. But let's say I have a seller, you know, and, and, and you know, one's, you know, you can't get the, the, the two couples together, decision makers, because one's in uh, California, the other's in Colorado on a business trip. Why don't you just do Google, Google Hangouts and do your listing presentation right there? Well, that's awesome. Um, yeah. For you, uh, Bob, do you have any personal habits that have contributed to your success? I would say waking up with a positive attitude, that number one is the affirmations I say every single day. That's my personal habit. Um, and that's about it. I read my Bible every single day. Okay, that's personal habit. Gets me in the right mindset. Remind me why I'm here and what I'm doing. Um, other than that, it's it's about my, my children, my grandchildren, and my wife. I bet you're great. I said habit. it. My, here, here's, here's a great habit, okay? I said to my wife, I you know, use it because I'm a reformed workaholic. Okay, and uh, I, I said to her, I said, you know, honey, my, my coaching calls generally end, you know, four thirty, five o'clock. Um, however, there are some calls I need to take privately because the clients need to talk about things that are personal and they don't want team members around. I promise every day I'll be home between 5.06 and 5.08 every single day. We, we, we can talk about your day and my day, okay, but on Mondays and Tuesdays, I'm going to have to do phone calls from 5.30 to 6.30. Can I have your permission for that? Right. So I get home at 5.08. If I'm going to be late, I let her know. We spend 20 minutes together going over her day, my day, what's going on tonight, who do I need to talk to tonight. I'm doing an hour phone call, and then it's all Brenda. Outside of that, I'm sorry. It's, it's going to have to take a you know, pretty big exception to cut into my personal time with my wife. That's great. And I'll bet it makes you... it, easier when, it makes it easier when you're an empty nest or two. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I bet, you're, you're, I bet you are like the grandpa that everybody, you know, all your grandkids just have a ball with. Absolutely. And it's, you know, I'm up to, I take about, you know, nine weeks vacation a year. You know, you're talking to somebody who would never go on vacation, hated vacation, thought it was a waste of time. Right. But boy, you know, it's just time alone with my wife in different parts of the world. And, you know, people, you know, the, the guy uh, that I told you went from 62 transactions to 400 at 35 years old, hadn't been on vacation in seven years. This year he'll take six weeks vacation. <laughs> You know what? How bad do you want something, Toby? Yeah. And that's why you really want to part, you know, with the listeners. Why are you doing this? 
and identify the simple reason of why you are in real estate. And it doesn't have to be as hard as you think. If you think it's hard, give me a call. I'll show you how it's not. I love it, man. I, well, Bob, our last question here, and then we'll sign off. Well, well, you can let us know where we can find you. But what are the first three steps a new agent should do to begin building his business in the next 10 days? In the next 10 days for a new agent. Number yeah. one, I'm going to tell you to get a contact management system. Okay. I'm going to tell you to take a, uh, put, get everybody you know and enter them into that contact management system or hire somebody to enter all the data. Name, address, phone number, and email address. That's number one. Number two, let everybody that you know, I don't care how you know them, but let everybody that you know, let them know you're in real estate. Right. Number three, put together an ideal weekly schedule of how you're going to perform your work day every single day. What day are you going to take off? Okay, put it in your schedule and stick to it. So those are your top three things. I love it. Actually, it should be, it should be schedule first. Okay, then get the contact manager and then enter and let everybody know you're in real estate. Okay. I'll, I'll rearrange that. And again, for everybody, you can find that on the show notes at superagentslive.com slash Bob Corcoran. Well, Bob, let us know where we can find you, and we'll sign off. You can visit us at www.corcoran, C-O-R-C-O-R-A-N, coaching.com, or email bob at corcorancoaching.com. Phone us at 1-800-957-8353. Bob, thanks for coming on the show. I, I, I can't tell you how much I love it, I, and I'm, I'm confident that everybody in the audience just, just resonated with this, with you and everything you said. So thanks again, and uh, I, I certainly hope that uh, a bunch of people in the audience can, can get on your website. There's a lot of videos there that I actually learned a lot about, um, a lot about you and what you guys are doing from your quick video. So I, I love it. Excellent. I appreciate it, Toby. And until next time. Have a prosperous mind. All right. Hey, thanks, Bob. All right. Bye-bye. See you. What an inspiring episode. You know, the main piece I got out of Bob's interview is that it's all about mindset. Change your mindset and you can change your life. You will change your life. Swallow that frog. Do the hard thing first and get rid of all the negativity out of your life. Completely. You know, I realized from this interview that coaching is not about delivering scripts or strategies, not that tactical stuff, but it's getting people into the right mindset, a mindset of abundance and gratitude. I really hope you have enjoyed this session, this interview, as much as I have. I'm grateful. If I'm going to get into Bob's viewpoint, I'm grateful that I was able to spend an hour with Bob and I and and to be able to share with you. So for you, if you found value in these coaching sessions, please take the time, leave a rating and review on iTunes, go tell your friends and reach out, send me an email, tell me what you liked, tell me how I can get better, tell me what you want to hear. I respond to all of them, all those emails. And and again, my, I told you in the beginning, I'll tell you again, my personal email is Toby, T-O-B-Y at superagentslive.com. Until next time, I personally thank you for listening to Super Agents Live.